My next guest is an historian, philosopher, and the best-selling author of Sapiens. Please welcome Yuval Noah Harari. But everybody knows this book. This is Sapiens. It is one of the most successful nonfiction books of all time. And uh, it tackled this sort of niche subject, you know, this niche subject, which is um, the entire history of humankind. And I'm just curious how you describe your field of study, hmm. since what you study is everything. Well, I'm a historian. But I understand history not as the study of the past. Uh, rather, it's the study of change, of how things change, mm -hmm. and which, what makes it relevant to the present and future. Um, you recently turned your focus from the past to the future, what we're talking about now, specifically the impact of technology. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it feels like um, things are changing incredibly fast. Like, this generation is undergoing a more rapid change of their technological environment than ever before. Is it really, or does every generation feel that way? Like, people are going, why aren't we carving in stone anymore? These kids with their papyrus, why are they doing that? <laughs> Is it real that we're actually going through some sort of accelerating change? Uh, every generation thinks like that, but this time it's real. <laughs> and, you know, it's the first time in human history that nobody has any idea how the world would look like in 20 years. Now, of course, politically, it was always impossible to predict the future. If you live in the Middle Ages, you don't know, maybe next year the Vikings invade, the Mongols invade, there is an epidemic. You can't predict that. That the basic stuff of human life, like the basic, basic skills, you need to teach your kids how to plant rice or wheat, how to ride a horse, how to shoot a bow, because this will still be relevant in 20 years. Mm -hmm. Today, nobody has any idea what to teach young people that will still be relevant in 20 years. Do we need to teach our young people anything now that AI is here? How to deal with it. How to deal with AI. Okay, so Th that's one AI, very... is, AI is, of course, one of the latest things that we've been anticipating for a long time. But now in some, I actually think so far, very minor ways, AI is showing hey, up in our society. it's still a baby AI. Okay. We haven't seen anything yet. Okay, so... Uh, um, a lot of people are worried. I'm not that worried about AI. I just, I just doesn't get my blood going to get worried about AI. I think of some positive aspects of it. I mean, I've seen how humans have handled history and not great. Mm. And, and so I'm ready for the, you know, big machines that make big decisions programmed by fellows with compassion and vision. You know, <laughs> I, I, I'm ready for the machines to tell us what to do. Mm -hmm. Are you? Uh, not really. It's... <laughs> It's extremely dangerous, Why is it dangerous to give up though? power to something we don't understand. But they're just extensions of us. I mean, no, they they're not. Yes, they are. We made them. They're us. We made them, but now they become potentially independent of us. The one thing to know about AI, the most important thing to know about AI, it's the first technology in history that can make decisions by itself and can create new ideas by itself. People compare it to the printing press, to the atom bomb. No, it's completely different. But it has print... no, is there any proof that an AI has come up with a new idea Absolutely. of Absolutely. All the time. What? Yes. Give me I, one. For instance, deciding what to show us on social, social media. Oh, well, that's, shapes... not, that's not a new idea. No. That is making decisions. Yes. Uh, so I said two things. Okay. There are making decisions and there are new ideas. If, for instance, you think about ideas, if you take, as a, for example, the game of Go. What is Go? I'm sorry. A much more complicated version of chess. Got it. Let's say. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, in East Asia, it's, it's one of the oldest games we know. Okay. 3,000 years of tradition in East Asia, entire school of, schools of thought. Okay. And AI comes and within a few years plays like no human ever imagined that it's possible to play. And this can happen in more and more fields. And we have never encountered anything like that before. Because every previous information technology, it simply copied and disseminated our ideas. The printing press just produced more books. Television just broadcast our thoughts. Here we have something that can create entirely new ideas, which are not even bound by the limits of our imagination. Our imagination is the product of organic biochemistry. Mm -hmm. AI is not limited by that.